So when I break down all of these different technologies and all these different aspects and elements that are impacting and influencing change, I really look at four core filters. Empower. Empower is all about giving users control. Every iteration over the past few years is leading towards this idea of empowerment of the individual and control. Next is exponential. Exponential is all about the rise of intelligent systems. This is all about the rise of data, algorithms, and all the other key elements tied to virtual assistants. And I'll talk about different levels of autonomy with exponential. Enhanced. Enhanced is really that connection between physical and digital reality. And it's focusing on when our environment is going to adapt to us versus us adapting to it. The final section is a new section. It's called experience. Experience is how we evolve our mindset to fully understand all of the shifts and changes that are happening around us. And how can we capitalize on these specific changes within our individual businesses? Now, we're going to talk about enhanced. Enhanced is that connection between blurring of the lines between physical and digital reality. So here we go. So I love the original Matrix back in 1999, you know. Matrix 4, okay, take it or leave it. But this whole idea of living in simulation really got me thinking. And I began to think a lot about the simulation theory. Anyone heard about it? Simulation theory basically states that we're living within some form of computer simulation already. Now, whether or not you believe that, totally fine. But what you're seeing on the screen is the ability to basically spatially map locations and overlay with digital overlays are going to fundamentally transform to where we essentially will be living in various forms of, sim of simulations. So whether you decide to take the blue pill and just continue to live life as you normally would or the red pill, and let's see how far the rabbit hole goes in terms of all of this kind of blending. So I'm gonna go red pill. Now, enhanced is about perception. So within this, we're gonna talk about the metaverse, we're gonna talk about computer vision, we're gonna talk about digital twins, we're gonna talk about synthetic reality. Now, a key facet to this right now is really tied to immersive experiences. So currently, you've got Meta, who's really focusing on the VR form factor, like the Oculus, Oculus headset, as a way to drive these kind of connections into introductions into the metaverse. Here's something that's of note. Most people think about VR and gaming. Only 16% of people are actually using VR headsets for gaming. A majority of it is to actually view social content and different experiences within it. And there are limitations though to the virtual headset as you, we all know. You have to be within a specific space and you can't really feel the world around you. So there's this kind of evolution that's happening. So there's one camp that's taking and really trying to find a more realistic experience within VR from haptic suits to where you can feel things. I've even seen research around taste. So you can actually taste things and smell things that are happening in these virtual worlds. Um, but what I'm actually looking at, I'm looking at kind of how are we going to evolve from just kind of that specific hardware. And we're going to talk a lot about multimodal interfaces and shifting from desktop and mobile is the primary way which we interface to kind of smart glasses and smart contacts. But before we get there, it's important to realize that what's going to happen is you as an individual are going to begin to kind of parse yourself across these different experiences. How you present yourself in the form of your digital avatar and your digital synth is going to be something that's going to be very unique to these different platforms. Similar to how you may post different content on LinkedIn or Instagram or Snap or TikTok or whatever other platform that you currently use, you have different personas. That's going to be amplified within these immersive experiences and these immersive worlds. How we actually work and how we collaborate is going to shift as well. One thing the pandemic did do is it accelerated this, this drive for collaboration and remote connection. My entire team is remote, everyone I work with. And we have our team meetings within VR. So this is a spatial app, we've tested Horizon, we've tested a number of different platforms that we can kind of work and interact with within, within 3D. Now, but one thing that I, I'm really excited about, take all of the, the, the virtual headsets and those immersive experiences aside for just a moment. To me, 
one of the fundamental drivers and points of differentiation moving forward is actually going to be tied to computer vision. Computer vision is a subset of AI. You can pull high dimensional elements from the environment around you that drives different forms of decisioning. Going back to the idea of the camera as a bridge to intelligence and the camera as a home screen for Gen Z, what you see on screen right now is Google Lenses. Over 1 billion queries have happened. Google Lens is that little rainbow camera that's at the very top of your Google app on your phone. You can basically open the camera and pull contextual elements from the, the real world around you and basically make sense of what it is. Now, not only is it around understanding the world around you, but you can actually invert that. So think about Google search results for just a moment. You can now augment traditional search results with 3D models that can be dropped into your physical location. Look at this example with muscle flexion on the screen. That was simply a traditional search result that then will also render a, a deeper immersive experience. You may have seen this also on Amazon where you can basically drop different elements of furniture in your room or different eyeglass vendors can take and do virtual try on. Similar concept. Now, what you're seeing on the screen as we move from just kind of deeply immersive headsets to heads up displays or glasses, one thing that needs to happen is we have to autonomously map our physical spaces. Just like the matrix example I showed you previously with the, the different code running all over every structure within the room, we have to fully map our environments around us in order to project these digital overlays onto them. And that's happening. Another way you can insert yourself into these experiences is through volumetric capture. So I've worked with Groove Jones in the past to scan my full body, put myself into these different experiences to have a, you know, a photorealistic avatar within those experiences. But one thing that really impressed me, what you're seeing on the screen now, this is actually a hologram. So this was from South by Southwest earlier this year. And as you can see with Portal, the real me is over on the, on the one side, hologram me, which you can tell has you know, different elements of depth to it in near photorealistic quality is there on the screen as well moving. So Google is also working on this as well. It's this idea of true presence so that in the physical world, you can be rendered and shown in a way that's almost in three dimension. And that's important because as we shift between digital and physical worlds, we have to quickly then take and apply this concept of digital twin to that. So a digital twin is simply a digital representation of a physical experience. What you're seeing on the screen right now was actually the, the full mapping and scanning of a full physical location that is turned into a digital shopping experience. And again, it's bridging the gap between physical and digital. You're seeing, <laughs> you're seeing meta pop up VR headsets in a physical space but you're seeing Nike open virtual stores within Roblox. So again, it's this constant blending. Now, I teased this idea of multimodal interfaces previously. What we're seeing now is we're seeing a lot of the major tech players moving towards combining style plus utility. So Meta has partnered with Luxottica and basically with Ray-Ban here to create smart glasses. Apple just presented their smart glass project mirror shade concept to their board of directors recently. So what you're going to see over the next year, you're going to see one of these major tech players release their next iteration of smart glass and a smart glass operating system with the sole purpose of taking and shifting from desktop and mobile to a heads up type of display. So this is incredibly important. All of these fast factors are coming into play. The virtual assistant, the form factor of the actual glass, the ability to map and render experiences in three dimensions. All of this is key. And here's an example from Mini. So even in taking and enhancing and augmenting how you would drive your vehicle, if you don't have a self-driving car yet, so you can see the young lady get into the vehicle and as she starts her drive, it does what you think it does. It pulls up different directions and it helps you kind of navigate the, the physical world around you. But also, if you'll notice here in just a moment, it's integrated into the camera system within the vehicle. So as she looks to her right and there's a skateboarder or impending danger coming through, it actually sees through the car 
because it stitches these different camera elements together and it just enhances the driving experience. And remember previously when I mentioned that the vehicle is going to become an entertainment center as we head towards you know, autonomous things? Here's an example from EGBs that actually takes the, the concept and idea of driving and turns it into a Mario Kart-like experience. Oh, by the way, that also has a loyalty component with a brand integration at the end with McDonald's here as it's kind of passing by the actual sign and the drive through etc. So you want a free meal, right? In time to turn and go. Now, we're going to continue down this path of mixing reality, blending reality, taking and enhancing our intelligence through both these kind of spatial models as well as AI-powered intelligent systems to the point that we're going to be living in a form of synthetic reality to where my specific preferences are going to be a key driver, again, because we're heading towards this decentralized web that you as an individual own your specific data, your preferences. And ultimately, the world around you just will become more and more customized and tailored to you. It may start as a similar room for everyone, just like you would if you're starting a, a game of you know, The Sims or something else. You start in a, a very you know, general location. But as the system learns your preferences, as it learns and understands what properties that you're associated with, I like Star Wars and Stranger Things and all these other things, that can then take and enhance your physical world. And the other thing that's going to be really interesting, I'm wearing a black t-shirt right now, but when you put on your specific smart glasses or whatever other form factor there is, I could be wearing a Gucci sweater and off-white Jordans and you know have a completely different digital outfit that I'm actually spending more money on the digital clothes that I wear versus the physical and again, that's tied back to ownership potentially with an NFT that could exist across my avatars or my physical person. So it's really kind of, it's interesting to think about the possibilities as you begin to think about this connection between physical and digital. So how are we going to evolve? How, is, how and when is all of this going to happen? It's already happening. You're seeing the virtual assistant moving to the center of devices, in the center of hardware. Not only that, we're moving to, away from kind of the traditional, well, Amazon and Google want us to move away from the traditional app approach to where they're stitching together different experiences based on scenes. Similar to the renting of the car, the intelligent system will take and identify what you're doing and be able to basically predict whatever the next step is going to be in terms of your specific interaction without you having to go and open a, an application. When is all of this going to happen? So I talk to leading tech organizations, private equity firms, luminaries, pretty much everyone across the across industry. And as I think about the predictions and when these things will hit mass market, originally I was thinking around 2028, but the reality right now was supply chain, where the patents are, where they are in terms of the development of some of the operating systems. You're basically trying to put a supercomputer on your face. You're going to start seeing multimodal interfaces at scale by 2030. You will see precursors like you've seen from Facebook in the market now and especially heading into the next year. So that, that is coming.